Right. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the day five of the DHS2 Analytic Tools uh, Online Academy. Uh, so we are kind of reaching the midpoint in this uh, entire academy, which uh, goes for two weeks. And um, I hope you, you must have learned a lot uh, during these four days. And today is going to be another uh, kind of a hectic day because we try to cover a lot of topics. Uh, so uh, that's why we, we uh, decided to start uh, right on time. So let me uh, start the presentation today. Um, we don't have uh, all the participants, but um, given how tight today's schedule is, I think we can start. Right, so today we'll be covering this topic, uh, the data visualizer. So in fact, uh, some of the content, at least the layout and where to access this particular tool has already been covered uh, in yesterday's session when we were doing the pivot table. But first of all, let us go through the objectives to see what we'll be covering uh, during this day. Right, so uh, there are several parts uh, in the entire session that we'll be covering. So uh, let's see, uh, let's go through one by one. So in the part one, what we will be doing is uh, we'll be discussing on the overview of the data visualizer interface. And then we will also discuss about how to select the inputs for a chart. So we'll be discussing how to add the data, organization units, and the periods dimension. And then we will discuss around about uh, how to arrange the layout of my chart using categories, series, and filter. So these three terms are totally new to you. So we will discuss what these three uh, terms mean. And next, in the part two, we will be discussing about uh, how to work with these aggregations in my chart and also how to add additional group selections, such as uh, you, may, you must be already familiar about concepts such as organization unit groups into the chart, right? Then uh, also we will discuss around a uh, few chart options like how to add titles, how to add 100% stack value, sort order, and target lines. And finally, about how to uh, download a particular chart. And in the part three, we will be discussing around uh, the topics of uh, pie charts, radar and spider charts, as well as gate charts. And then finally, as the uh, part four, we'll be discussing about uh, cumulative values options and year over year chart type. So uh, I know it's a lot of topics that we are hoping to cover in this, uh, I mean, during one day, but uh, we'll have to do it uh, so that, uh, I mean, uh, we'll be able to start move on to the next session without uh, dragging a few of the contents from today's session to, the, to Monday, right? All right, so um, let me share my screen again. I'm seeing a few participants are joining now, let me check. Right, okay. Right, I'm sharing my screen again. And uh, I'm in this instance, uh, our exercise instance, uh, the same instance that all, all of you have access. Um, and uh, right now I'm in this very familiar uh, interface, which is a dashboard. So, you already know how to uh, access the data visualize application uh, because uh, we also did the same uh, yesterday when we were doing uh, the pivot tables. So let me click on uh, the data visualizer, what we see here, right? And it opens the data visualizer uh, application, right? So first of all, just to recap uh, what we did yesterday about uh, the components of this uh, data visualizer interface. So on your left side, you are seeing the dimensions. So here we, uh, this is where we select the data, the period, and the organization dimensions, the three Ws of PHIS2. And then if we have, uh, in addition, any other dimensions that we have configured, this will be visible to you, right? And on right-hand side in the top, we have uh, like uh, some selections 
uh, series category and filter. We will discuss about them a bit later. And this is where we are getting the uh, final uh, visualization out. Okay. So uh, let's do something. I'm going to start by clicking on file and let's open one favorite item, which has already been saved. So I'm going to search for this item that we have saved previously called HIV cascade. Right? So I'm going to search HIV cascade and I get, uh, and I see this item here, right? Um, HIV cascade, and you can see here the uh, uh, item type, which is, uh, of course, a column chart, right? I click and open this chart, right? Right, so what do we see here? So previously, in fact, yesterday, what we saw in this uh, data visualizer, in this visualization component were all tables, but now we are seeing charts. So entire day today, we'll be seeing different types of charts. And we will talk about uh, what these chart types are uh, one by one a bit later. But if we just concentrate on what we see here, what is this? This I think uh, all of you must be familiar. Uh, what is it? If anyone can answer, just to see if uh, everyone is listening. What do we see here? Anybody? That's the simplest question I can ask for the day. Uh, what do we see here? Oh, it's a it's a graph. It's a graph, yes. HIV uh, data. So we have people living with HIV, mm -hmm. and the um on the x-axis, and then uh these are people in training land. Mm -hmm. uh, last twelve months, the okay. positive cases those on ART, and uh, those retained in the uh in the on ART in the last twelve months. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, a, a graph, column graph. Column, that's, yeah, exactly. So what I was actually expecting uh, for you to start is like, it's a column, column chart that you're seeing here. And uh, you nicely describe what we have in X and Y axis. So in X axis, we are seeing some data, right? Uh, yeah. Three types of data that we see are HIV positives, people living with ART, and yeah, people, living with H people living with HIV retained for ART in the last 12 months. And on the y-axis, we are seeing uh, the, the values, the data value. And of yeah. course, uh, we have uh, the data only for the last 12 months for the entire training lab. So that's what we see in a nutshell. Okay. So again, um, let me just uh, try to hover over what we see here. So when I, uh, I, I will, I will, I have uh, not yet uh, discussed about what series categories and filters mean, but let's see what we actually have here. So in the period we are seeing uh, the last 12 months, and then uh, in the filter, and here we are seeing, uh, of course, the organization unit, which is the training land. And when I hover onto this categories, the data dimension, we are seeing like there are three data items that, uh, that of course, what you are seeing as individual columns here, right? Okay. So let us try to edit uh, one by one. So I'm going to click on this uh, period dimension here. And now I'm seeing the relative periods, the available relative periods for the months category is mentioned here. And the selected one is 12, right? Okay. So let's try to um, change that a bit. And let me select last three months so I can double click and it goes here. And let me also remove the last 12 months. It's like uh, this, of course, is something that, uh, I mean, it doesn't make any sense to put both of them there. So I just uh, removed last 12 months. And what I did was I, will, I put uh, last three months. And now what I can do is I can click on update. So let's see what happens. All right. Now we see that the num values have gone down, right? The number of the, 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 the final value, uh, the figures. And we are also seeing that data uh, that you see in this visualization is only for the last three months. Okay, so I'm trying to recap what you did yesterday about pivot table. So this there is nothing new here. Okay, right. Um, and now let us do something like this. Now here we see organization uh, unit appearing under series and the data appearing under category. Right. 
we have still not defined what uh, series and categories are, but let, let's try to, you know, like uh, shuffle them so that now the data goes to the series and the, uh, for the category, we get organization unit, right? And I click on update. So what do we see here? We see that uh, basically uh, what actually changed. Previously we had uh, all these, I mean, individual columns in one color, but now we are seeing them in different colors, right? We are, we are seeing uh, the uh, people living with HIV positive in, uh, uh, in green and blue is uh, uh, new on ARP and red is retained on ARP in the last 12 months, okay? Right. So this way, what we understand is like, in, uh, uh, when we just shuffle these individual dimensions around series, category, and filter, whatever the output that we uh, that we plan to have here is going to change. I hope everything is clear up to this point. Okay, so let's try to change it one more time. Let's put a period here, okay? And um, let's try to get the data here and organization units I'm going to put to, uh, to the filter. And I click on update. Now you are getting a total different uh, visualization where you see that uh, whatever we saw here before has been grouped into separate columns, okay? So let's just focus on what we see in X and Y axis. So here in the X axis, we are seeing the data items, right? The HIV test positives, uh, PL, HIV, new one ARP, and in last 12 months. And again, in the Y axis, we are seeing as uh, how we started before, the figures. But the difference that we are seeing now is the, 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 the grouping, the original grouping that we have in x-axis has have been further subdivided into colors. Now this, each of these color bars represent uh, the months. So this way, what we can do is we can compare uh, each of these values, the data items across the period dimension, right? So that's what has taken, uh, what, what has actually happened, All right? Fine, so now that we have seen some uh, modifications that we can do by uh, changing or shuffling each of these dimensions uh, around this series, categories, and filter, let us actually have a look at what this series, categories, and filter mean, okay? Right. To do that, I will move on to this uh, presentation. Fine, right. So what do we see here? Uh, so the visualization is not uh, too much different to what we saw before, right? What you are seeing here is a column chart in the first place, right? But then again, in, in that column chart, we have identified some different area. So we have numbered them as one, two, and three, okay? So uh, the number one here, Right, we are trying to show a uh, number one and two both. We are we are trying to uh, focus on something that is appearing in x-axis, right? And then number three here, uh, we are talking about something that is uh, affecting the entire visualization. So let us take one by one. So the first thing, which is of course what we refer to as categories, okay, number one. So in the category, what we see here is a period dimension, and you can see here November 2018, December 2018, and January 2019 here. Okay, so uh, now in this type of chart, now remember what I, mean, what, what I mentioned just now, uh, these definitions that I'm going to tell now about categories, series, especially, these change uh, depending on what type of chart you are using. So here in this column chart, the categories will always be the x-axis, right? As you can see here, the x-axis. And we can see the period uh, is the x-axis in this example. You can see November, December, and January. And when we first open the chart, the data, uh, data was in the category and the data items were listed along the x-axis, if you can remember, okay? And y-axis in, in this type of chart is always going to be 
uh, in this uh, with this configuration the values right you can see like now 2500 5000 7500 so these are always going to be values okay right so basically what you can what you have to realize is that in in this type of column charts it's uh, the category is going to be in x axis and it's it's basically the groupings of the data that we are showing okay so if that is so what do we mean by the series right so what series does is it is in fact uh, uh, further subdivide what you are seeing on the category dimension okay so here um you see the data in the category which is like i mean the the, the periods november december and january and what series does is like whatever the data that is there in the uh, in the, in each of these dimensions so for example the november it has further subdivided that data so that is why we are seeing hiv test positives people living with the art and the last 12 months uh, under this november 2018 category so the same thing we are seeing in for december as well and also for january so what you have to understand is like the category in a nutshell is going to be in x axis uh, for these type of charts, right? And series is going to further subdivide or subgroup the data that you are seeing in the x-axis defined by the category. I hope it is clear up to this point about categories and uh, series. So if that is the case, what do we mean by filter? So the filter per se, like uh, just as how we understand the concept of uh, filter in layman's term, it's it kind of filters out what is going to appear in this visualization okay so basically uh, like before we decide on series and category everything uh, that is going to appear in this visualization has been defined by the filter so all the data that we are going to show in the visualization is getting filtered by the filter that we define and once the data is filtered that data we are going to arrange in the layout uh, for categories and series right so now here, as you can see, the organization unit has been defined in the filter as training land, right? So because every, uh, it has been decide, uh, decided that training land is going to be the highest point at which we uh, filter, uh, the data that you see in this visualization is going to represent the entire training land. So in case if you can change, uh, uh, if you can filter out uh, the, the uh, visualization for a given region, say animal region, the data that you are going to see here is only going to be representing the animal region. Okay. Is that clear? Any questions up to this point about uh, series, categories, and filter? Now, before you ask, uh, 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 like if you say, like, uh, can you define the category as something that is going to be x axis in general across all chart types? The answer is no, right? So for example, there are some chart uh, types where we can't define X and Y axis. So for example, uh, uh, in pie charts, we don't have a X or Y axis. And in bar charts, sometimes um, the, the axis changes, right? So, so I will talk about it uh, in time to come. But for now, let's uh, focus only on um, uh, column charts and try to understand the concepts of series, categories, and filter. Any questions up to this point? not we can decide uh, we can discuss about uh, individual chart types i think uh, now we have uh, most of the participants joined so just to recap what we have done so far uh, is like uh, we discussed the objectives for the day um, so basically we'll be covering all about uh, the data visualizer and then uh, we discussed the interface of the data visualizer app which even though you joined late, uh, you must be familiar because it's the same as what we used uh, yesterday for pivot table. And then we discuss about these dimensions and how to configure them in data visualization. So the important three uh, three concepts that we uh, that 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 is uh, that we did not discuss yesterday uh, are these this uh, new uh, the terms series, categories, and filter. So filter basically defines the scope of the visualization. So Whatever we uh, we try to visualize in this graph, uh, the filter defines at the top the boundary. Okay, so everything gets filtered out from what we defined here and appear in the visualization. And in column charts, category basically define 
uh, the x-axis and whatever appearing in the x-axis is further subdivided and grouped by the uh, series in this type of column charts. Okay. So if that is clear, let me again stop sharing the presentation and uh, I will try to discuss about something else, right? Right, so I'm going back to the, our demo instance, the, the exercise instance, and here we, we see the series categories and filter, and, um, and then uh, we are also seeing something he, over here, uh, which we did not focus yesterday, called chart type, okay? Right. So here we are seeing, now yesterday we were using pivot table, and now today we have, uh, we can discuss so many other different chart types, right? We have, we can see like uh, most of you must be familiar, column, stack column, bar, stack bar, line, bar, pi, here over here, area, and there are so many chart types, right? So we can use any of them for different visualizations, but there are some generally accepted uh, concepts on which top, which chart type suits which particular scenario, right? So what we are going to do next is to just go through a brief overview of which top, uh, chart type to use. Okay. So to do that, let me move on to a different presentation. Right. So this presentation, as of now, will not appear in your uh, the the learning management system. So don't panic. This will be uploaded into it uh, uh, once once I conclude this session. Right. So uh, uh, don't worry. It, it, it uh, because it is not currently showing in your LMS. Okay. So let us see what are the chart types available and when we can use it. Right. So I hope you can see this screen. Now, the thing is, this is a very overwhelming crowded slide. So pardon me for that, which highlights uh, the different types of visualizations that you can use as charts, right? So the, the concept, I'm not going to discuss in detail uh, of what you are seeing here, but I, what I want to highlight is like, the main question that we ask is, what would you like to show, right? So when you are like, always think, before you design a visualization, what you actually expect to show and to whom are we showing? So for example, when we are uh, deciding on what to show, we have to decide, are we trying to show a comparison or we want to show a distribution or it is, is it about composition or about relationships, right? So just give me a minute. I'm having some issues with Zoom. Right, okay, great. So um, thing is we are, okay, now I think uh, we must have uh, been looking at what, what appears here. I'm not going to go through all of them. And I must also mention like some of the uh, graphs or chart types that you see in this uh, particular slide are not available in DHN school. So for example, what we have to think is, say like, if I want to show a comparison, right? If I'm going to do that, I just have to decide, is it among few items? or is this comparison over time? So if it is going to be comparison over time, the probable chart times that we, the types that we can use are mostly line charts, or maybe even column charts, or uh, we can use area charts, right? But then again, like uh, which one to choose across uh, these options, we can, I mean, sub, uh, decide on a few other minor criteria, like how many periods, things like that. And if it is going to be among uh, items, then we mostly will be using column charts and bar charts, right? And if you are going to use relationships, we can use scatter chart. Unfortunately, we are not discussing around about scatter chart because we are mostly focusing on 2.35, but that chart type is available in the DHS2 version 2.36, which will be not which we are not um, covering during this academy. But if you are interested, you can check. 
the latest version of DHIS2 and it supports scatter chart. If you want to show distribution, there are a few chart types available, right? And then uh, again about composition, uh, there are chart types such as column charts, pie charts, right? That, that, we, that are available in DHIS2. And we can decide which chart type is more suited for a given uh, visualization that we are trying to show, okay? Is that clear? You don't have to memorize anything. This I just mentioned as reference, okay? So now let us go through uh, one by one in, uh, and compare each of the chart types, right? So the first chart type that we'll be most of the time dealing with is called column charts, right? So can someone tell me when we are going to use column charts? What are the simplest use cases? We can use column charts. Like uh, uh, when, I mean, what type of uh, scenarios matches uh, the use of column charts? Anybody? Yes, Steve. Yeah, uh, when we're comparing data, uh, looking at uh, different values um, mm -hmm. for maybe uh, as this one is like uh, uh, different categories or uh, different groups of people, we can okay. use uh, the values that we are looking at for the data elements or uh, variables of interest. So yeah. we can use we can use column charts for that. Right. Yeah, that's great. Any 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 further answers? Chintaki, you want me to? Uh, comparison between like in this uh, instance uh, between districts, how how uh, each district has performed. Exactly. Yes. So basically, column charts is a nice uh, type of visualizations if you want to show comparisons, right? So for example, uh, there are a few things that we have to keep in mind when we are using column charts. So uh, the thing is like a uh, comparison, if the, like, I mean, all these things that I mentioned here, none of them are hard and fast rules, right? There, there, are, there are exceptions and there are different norms accepted by different uh, entities, but like these are the ones that are generally recommended. So like uh, if the number of categories is quite small, right? You can use column charts, right? And um, if usually if the time dimension is, uh, is something that we are concerned about, we generally uh, put the time dimension into the X axis or the horizontal axis, right? And then um, uh, if there are trends, uh, you can use column charts, but, may, but, but uh, I, I will uh, explain about it in, uh, in next few slides. Column charts is not the best chart types for us to use if you are talking about trends. But if the number of data points are less, we can still use column charts. Okay, right. Now, what do we see here? This is called stacked column charts. So when can we use stacked column charts? Anybody? Uh, wherever there is category, uh, we need to do, uh, do this uh, aggregation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, disaggregated categories. For example, we are seeing here in this uh, in this uh, particular example, uh, we we uh, we have the male and female, uh, I mean, basically gender disaggregation, and we are using stacked column charts. So here, uh, basically, we are talking about the composition, right? So the data is there in a, in one column, and we can talk more about the composition of the data that is there in that particular column, right? So for example, we can see the blue and green components together uh, consist of this entire column or entire bar, right? So to discuss about the visualizations, we can use. But then again, we have to be mindful not to use too many compositions at a time, right? Because like you can think of a column here in like all the rainbow colors. And then what happens is our human eyes are not good at, you know, comparing uh, uh, across a, a particular column, right? When the, when the uh, categories or the composition items become too much, it will be very difficult uh, for, for, the, for the person who sees to compare, okay? And then uh, also make sure the composing parts are relatively similar in size, right? But like if, if these are very small and like some are very large, then again, it will be very difficult to compare. Right. 
So let's move on to the next chart type, which is the bar chart. So um, right now, now this is somewhat similar, right? So we discussed about column charts before, and this is again a, a, a category of a column chart. It's just that the appearance is somewhat different. So what do you what what can you say about bar charts? When can you use bar charts? What would be the situation that you can consider using a bar chart as opposed to the column chart that we that uh, we showed before? When the range of values are higher. Uh, sorry, Shan, I could not hear you. When the range of values within categories are higher. Um, it was not quite clear, but um, yeah. Would we need both comparison and composition? Oh, yeah, but uh, why don't we just use the column? I mean, can't we do it by using column charts also? Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a tricky question. Like, why don't we use uh, column charts? And I mean, you know, for this example, yeah, why is it because of the values? If the values are large, exactly. That's the thing, right? So the thing is, like, say for example, if the number of categories are, are, are like, because if you can remember, in when I was explaining about columns, if the categories are like limited, you can use this uh, uh, the 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 vertical columns, right? But if the categories are larger, uh, we can have a better visualization if we arrange it as bar charts, right? And also. Uh, when like, for example, if we have these longer names, I mean, this is another like reason why some people use bar charts, like when, when the uh, names are longer and uh, if we want them to appear here uh, in, in our ver normal vertical charts, if we want to appear them in X axis, they, that won't appear that well. So for that also, some people use bar charts, right? Okay. So the next chart type is line charts. So when can we ideally use... Uh, Line charts. For visualization of time series data. For visualization of time series data, yes. That's that's a classic example. And uh, when exactly, like there are many use cases of uh, visualization of time series data, but uh, what are we actually trying to do with line charts? Uh, and Identify the... trends. And exactly. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Yes. Maybe back uh, a bit on the bar chart, please. I want just to ask one question. Yeah, please. Sorry. Uh, uh, just scroll back to the previous uh, slide. Mm -hmm. Previous. Yep. Yes, yes. So um, for the first point where it, it lightened that uh, number of categories, uh, actually we use bar charts when we are using, uh, when we have a uh, number of categories greater than, five, uh, greater than seven. I was, um, uh, um, um, I was wondering if uh, the statement is well lightened or is it the number of categories which should be more uh, greater than seven so that we can use this bar chart or it's these are the values of categories which should be greater, which should be higher, so that we can use this. Are they the number of categories of the values of uh, categories? Uh, all right. So uh, as I mentioned before, now these are not hard and fast rules. Uh, these are just general accepted concepts because, like, what I simply want to. We have say like uh, in categories that are appearing in the horizontal uh, uh, bar, uh, horizontal column, the column charts. It wouldn't look that nice. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be nice. But in bar chart, what happens is because the x, uh, the y axis is exactly where these categories are appearing, we can have slightly larger number of categories that we can accommodate. So. There is no cutoff limit, like if it is seven, eight, or 10, nothing like that. And even you can still, if you, if you think like for my visualization, I think that this chart types looks much better and it is justifiable. You can go ahead and use it. I mean, there are no uh, particular cutoff values. It's just that I have highlighted because like, otherwise you would ask uh, the, the usual question that comes is if we don't, if I just mention, if too much, you will always ask uh, what would be a number that we can decide. So. That's why we have mentioned some numbers here, but uh, I mean, it's totally up to you. 
but the general con general concept that i want to highlight is in the y axis we can accommodate more categories compared to uh, the x axis so that's oh, okay. what, uh, where where people are deciding to use uh, bar charts okay thank you right sure so trends coming uh, sorry coming back to line charts yeah uh, so i can't remember who mentioned but uh, the the i mean one important thing is like line charts are the best suited if you want to do some trend based visualizations and again the data visualization across across period of time right um, and if you can remember i mentioned even for column charts we can use uh, for uh, comparison over time but the thing is if the number of data points are less you can use it the column charts but if the number of data points are very very high you can always use uh, the line charts right so this is one uh, major application of a uh, 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 major chart types that we usually use in dhis2 when we want to uh, highlight time based trends of data okay right the area charts so like what can you say about area charts when do we use it so basically area charts is again another variant of the line charts it's just that it's kind of more uh, giving more focus on the area that is below the line right so you have the line chart right here and uh, it's also uh, it has applied some color to the area that is uh, lying beneath the the particular line that we are concerned of, right so basically uh, these type of charts right uh, because because uh, it is more concerned about the area it's best suited if you are trying to present the cumulative values and the change of cumulative values over time right so for example if you want to talk about say number of uh, covid 19 cases of a country across last so many months right and you want to show a cumulative value you can use uh, uh, this area charts right so that's one application of when we can use area charts right then we have another variant of uh, area charts called stacked area charts right so like what when when would you apply stacked area charts um, as opposed to just a simple uh, area charts what can we show more in this type of chart it's again similar to the column charts right here we can show the composition right and then again uh, uh, composition plus if you are talking about cumulative values you can use uh, the stack uh, the stacked area charts okay right so next move, we move on to a very common chart called pie charts when are we using pie charts what's the classic uh, use of a pie, pie chart i mean as opposed to uh, any other chart when comparing components when comparing components components yeah but uh, uh, i mean like uh, what is the most important thing about a pie chart which you can't actually i mean uh, which has to be there uh, which was not a concern when we were applying uh, the column charts percentage uh, distribution distribution yeah so what, what about no. the distribution total value has to be 100% uh -huh. exactly chintak i mean that was the answer i was expecting so here like now now the thing is for like uh, whatever we are trying to do right we have uh, the entire circle which is a 360 degrees okay so we just can't fill just one section okay right or, or uh, one wedge of the circle and just not think about the other right so that means whatever we are trying to highlight here has to be A, a part of the entire whole okay so that's exactly what chintaka mentioned so he mentioned that it has to ideally all this should adapt to 100% or else all all this should adapt to 360 degrees uh, that that formulate the circle okay so that's the most important thing so that is why this is best used uh, when we want to visualize a part to whole relationship or a composition right because we can use stack charts to show composition but here there is always this part to whole right the pro, the the uh, proportion concept is always there right and the other important thing is now this is not meant to compare individual sections to each other or to represent exact values right 
that we have to be mindful that we are not going to you know like compare individual sections when we are using pie charts you can say yeah we can obviously right now you here you can see uh, now looking at this one we can see female is greater than male but this is not a concept that we can apply in a generic way and try to you know like uh, represent exact value so why i say so okay let me move, uh, show you another example what do you think about um, these pie charts any comments I mean, vivid, beautiful, like so many colors. Any comments? Is this a good pie chart? It is. A, it is a five category. Uh, yes, good pie chart. It's a good pie chart. Okay. Any other comments? Because it's okay. So because it's, it's not. It's not presenting the data percentage of data. No. Uh -huh. no. It, it's not presenting the percentage of data, so uh, it's not a good pie chart. Representation, uh, representation okay. good pie chart. Right. So you are saying it is not a good pie chart because it is not showing the percentage of data, right? Okay. So uh, if what, what if I say right now here it doesn't appear, but I can mention the percentage or the actual numbers uh, in 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 each of these ones. Then uh, does it become a good pie chart? Say for example. I mentioned uh, the values, the exact values are, uh, as a text in each of these wedges. Uh, does that make it a good pie chart? What do you think? Uh, it, it will be a good pie chart if it's uh, if the distribution equal to 100%. It'll, the distribution will come up to 100% for sure. Yes, it's a good pie chart. Then it's a good, good pie chart. Okay. Any other comments? No, it doesn't have legends. Uh -huh. Why? Uh, no legends so uh, no. no legends. okay no legends right. yeah the thing is this right so uh, you must have seen uh, i think at least uh, in my country like uh, most of uh, the media when they want to highlight you something that they want you to think they do these kind of tricks right so the thing is uh, i mean like what we have to understand is uh, like we can justify our visualization saying okay we we show this we are uh, having a text and things like that but what we have to be always mindful is what we are showing now, right? Whatever that you are trying to visualize is what uh, catches the mind of the end user first, right? So they will go into specifics about reading uh, the, the, the legend values or the text values in, inside this each of the wedges if they have time. Otherwise, they will just glance at it and try to grasp uh, whatever they, they, they perceive, right? So in that sense, these charts are not ideal. Because if you can remember, let me show you the next, uh, I mean, something different. Okay. Now, what do you think? Did you see this aspect before? Now, here you are seeing a set of pie charts, right? And for the same scenario, uh, beneath here, you are seeing column charts. What are the differences? Like, what, what, what do you get by looking at these two chart types? And then with this, can you say something now? Uh, if you go back to my initial question, whether this was a good pie chart or did, whether, whether uh, I mean, whether this was a very good scenario of application of pie chart, if you can elaborate now, what do you think? Uh, in a pie chart, we are not easily able to assess the magnitude of each category. You know, here in the uh, in the bar chart below, we are easily able to understand which is maximum and which is minimum. Uh, whereas in the in all the three pie charts, they look more or less the same. Exactly. Yeah, that's the answer. So the thing is like, I mean, uh, that's what I said. Like you, you can justify, okay, we can draw, I mean, yeah, true, because the number of categories are around five. Yeah, we can use the pie chart. No. But the thing is, if our aim of the visualization is to show the composition or a kind of a comparison, and we are seeing that each of the wedges in the pie chart is going to be more or less same, then the human eye, I mean, we really fail to differentiate or compare the values by looking at a pie chart. As you can see here, now here, if we use a column chart, we can nicely see the comparison, but the pie chart fails at doing that, okay? So that's what we have to understand, okay? Right, so going back to pie chart and, uh, and, and about uh, when to use it, so make sure that it equals 100%, right? And it has to be less than six categories. I mean, otherwise it's going to be very difficult, but 
always think what you are trying to show, right? So, for example, if there's a clear winner, right? I mean, if you have a very large wedge that you are, that you can show uh, in the pie chart, you can use it. But uh, otherwise, if, if, if it is similar to uh, the visualization I showed in the previous slide, please don't use it, right? And ideally, it should be a simple, um, like, for example, a two-category pie chart, where, which, which can easily, you know, highlight the idea that you want to highlight to the end user, okay? And the, this was what I highlighted in the previous one. If these are identical, please don't use it. Okay. Yeah. What is this? This is called gate chart. And in uh, DHIS2, we have gate chart. When can we use gate chart? Right, so I will answer myself because it's so, it's so simple. Usually, now these gate charts are, are, are ideal if we want to highlight or focus about the single key, right? And usually, even in DHIS2, what we can do is, in addition to highlighting a figure, right, you can see this is 81, we can change the color, right, uh, with a legend so that uh, you can actually give some idea in addition. Say, for example, now this 81 may not mean anything. We may feel, okay, 81 is good, but what if 85? So, for example, if, if our country decide on a legend where we think 90 or above is the best, right, and maybe 90 to 70 is average, or anything below 80, uh, uh, 70, we don't even care. It's very bad, right? But then um, nobody uh, will understand this concept if we can't apply a legend, because they will think, okay, 81 is it's not bad. It's, it, it may be even good. But it's not so. So the thing is, there are two concepts. You can here, of course, highlight the value and you can apply a legend to convey that uh, second concept that I want to highlight, which is the legend. Okay. So these are ideal, for example, such as uh, if you want to show the progress or if you want to concentrate about uh, key performance indicators or single measure, right? Um, and the most important thing is you can quickly look at this and understand the idea. Right. Okay. Right. So I will stop uh, the different chart types here. We'll be talking about few additional ones uh, uh, about radar chart and single value charts, which I will discuss when I'm doing that particular session. But I just wanted to highlight and compare the few important chart types that we are usually dealing with when we are uh, talking about uh, uh, the visualizations in the DHIS2 data visualizer. Okay. Right. So let me go back to. Uh, excuse me. Yes. Yes. Questions? Yes. Uh, back to the pie chart. Yeah. Um, I have seen that it's advised to use the pie chart when at least you have uh, two or less than two uh, categories to compare. Less what than two, of course, no. Uh, I mean, less than two means one. So one category. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, at least two. Yeah. Sorry. Did I less than two? The presentation. Yes. Yeah, so does it mean that, that has to be more can... than does it mean that more than two it's not divisible? No, not like that. What I wanted to say was ideal if we have two categories because then we 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 actually uh, as I mentioned before we want to show a, a comparison which attributes the entire whole. So the thing is like if it is something like male and female, just by looking at the pie chart you get the idea. But whenever you have more than two categories. What we always indirectly ask the user to do is compare, compare the sizes or the size of the wedges. This we give to the user, right? So if we want, it again depends on the type of user. If, we, if our end users are not too tech savvy or like they are just uh, ordinary healthcare workers and we are meaning to have these visualizations in the dashboard available to the field health staff, then to confuse them with, uh, uh, I mean, large categories in pie charts where they have to, you know, compare and, uh, by looking at the visualization may not be the best method. That's what I wanted to highlight. So it's it's as, now you may you may realize like it all depends on what you want to do. There are best practices, recommended practices. You can always deviate from them if you can justify. Okay. In other words, I was wondering if there's any way. Uh, to represent this, this kind of distributions in terms of per, uh, percentage uh, without using without using uh, pie charts, I'm just I was just wondering if there's any way um, apart from pie chart. But I have uh, uh, I have uh, now I understand what you mean. Yeah. There are ways. I mean, for example, uh, when we were doing the pivot table, we talked about uh, 
applying legends, right? So yeah, invariably we can, I mean, by using legends, we can convert it to a uh, scorecard. So when we do that, uh, scorecard and things like that, maybe another type of visualization where you compare the colors as well as the figures are already there. So yeah, there are different ways of doing it. Sure. Okay, right. Fine. Um, right, so we we can do the, uh, no, I mean, I think we, I, I will cover the next uh, component also and then we go to the ungraded exercise, okay? Yeah. Junaid, any questions? Oh. Good question. Yeah. Camera uh, Sorry, Junaid, is not clear. Uh, is there? I mean, you want to ask a question? Or? Camera two hundred. Uh, I think uh, it's not about a question. So let me mute you. Friends, right, okay. So um, let me share my screen again. Fine. Right, so let's try to draw a new chart. So whenever we want to new, draw a new chart, what we can do is if we are inside the data visualizer, we can click on file, new, and it will always ask whether you want to save it, right? Uh, or like uh, you want to leave, right? So I will just click on yes, leave. So I don't want to save it, okay, right. Uh, and what I'm planning to do is to uh, draw a chart about TB notification. Right, and to see whether there has been any significant changes of TB notifications um, across time. Right? So usually, uh, like I want to do a kind of a comparison uh, by drawing this TB notifications, right? And uh, let me ask a quick question. In TB programs, what's the usual uh, frequency of reporting? Like what's the usual period type, uh, free period frequency they report data in TB? TB most of the time it's quarterly on quarterly basis. Exactly, it's it's uh, usually quarterly, right? Okay, right. So having that in mind, right? If we want to compare, right, trends of uh, TB reporting, what would be the chart type that you would like to use? What would be the most useful to compare the trends? In which period of time? Uh, sorry, a uh, period of time, it could be quarterly. We so want, want to compare the reporting rate. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, along uh, different, among yeah, different let, let, uh, quarters. Uh, okay, let, let me explain the scenario a bit, bit further, right? So, for example, um, I would like to compare with the... TV, now, there are different TV notifications, right? We have all cases. We can compare new and relapses. We can compare new and uh, pulmonary bacteriological com uh, confirmed, right? Uh, or uh, clinically diagnosed. So we have different data items, right? That, that we report in TB, TB program, right? So we want to check how this reporting of different data items have changed across a period of time. It may be like a, a, a quarter uh, reporting over three years, something like that, or two years. So if that is what we are going to visualize, what would be the chart type that we would like to use? Year over year line chart. Uh, okay, right. Line so uh, yeah, okay. Yes, exactly. So there were two answers. The first answer I would, uh, for now, I would just uh, pretend that I did not hear that because it might confuse many of you. So I, I, I will not talk about this year over year line chart just now. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to know broadly what type so we have different types like uh, columns, lines, pi. So that way, uh, I got one answer saying line charts. Everyone agree? Okay. There are no answers. Yes. Okay, then let's use line charts because as you can remember, uh, I mentioned like uh, the line charts would be the ideal if we are using um, it for comparisons, right? To show the trends. Right. 
I hope you can see my screen. Let me share again. I had some issue. Okay, right. So I have selected line charts here. Okay, right. And then what I'm going to do next is I have to decide on the dimensions. So first of all, the data dimension. Okay. So let me click on data dimensions. This I'm going a bit fast because you're already familiar with it. So I will uh, select, I will keep the data type as indicators and we have different groups. So I will take uh, the group called TB case notification, right? And here I will try to type say notification, notification rate. Okay, right. So here we have uh, four data items selected, uh, like one for cases, one for relapses, bacteriological confirmed, and pulmonary uh, clinically diagnosed, right? So all these four items I will select onto this side. Okay, so that is uh, confirmed. Like now this data dimension is done. I will, and now I have two options. I can click on hide or I can click on update. The difference is if I click on update, it will actually update the visualization. If I click on hide, it will select and it will not visualize anything. Okay. So I click on hide and keep it just like that. So I can see when I have my uh, uh, mouse pointer, I can see that uh, the four items have been selected, but the visualization is not yet there. All right. Okay. Right. So um, fine. I will just keep it there. And uh, I have to now, now here we have, um, now when I did that, it has automatically gone to the series. Okay. So the question I, I have is like, uh, based on what we learned in the bar chart type example, what effect will the data being in the series have on this line chart? So if I repeat my question, you can remember what I drew on the bar chart, the column chart, right? So based on that, uh, how do you think, I mean, like applying uh, data to line charts, how do you think, I mean, where do you think this data dimension will represent in this final graph? You can visualize, right? The final output and tell me, where will these uh, data dimensions appear in the uh, line chart? How will it be like? Will it be the x-axis or is it something different? When it is there in the series? Anybody? I think x-axis would be uh, x-axis. Yeah. Okay, uh, x-axis is like this, right? Here we will have some, okay, fine. X-axis, any other answers? Any more answers? Right, so, before, uh, I mean, so I will just uh, stop it there. I will just post it there and I will go further and apply something for a category dimension as well. So let me click on the period. So uh, automatically period is uh, in the category dimension. So I click here, right? And the quarter. Okay. So here I will select quarters, right? And I have quarters for each of the years. Uh, sorry, now here I have only relative periods. So let me do something. I will just get rid of 12 months and I will go for fixed periods. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, have for the period of uh, last three years, all the quarters. So I will select quarterly in year 20. I will start with year 2018, right? So I have uh, four quarters in 2018 and I put it here and I select 2019 then push it to this side and I select 2019 and push it up to this side. Is that clear what I did? I selected fixed period as opposed to relative because I want to compare uh, a long time, not just one year, right? Because this is quarterly data, right? So I selected last three years and I selected all the quarters in the last three years, okay? Is that clear? And I click on height. Done. What about the org unit? Let's keep it at training land for the moment. Right, fine. So everything is set, and I, all I have to do is so I have selected the chart type. Series is done. Is uh, categories is okay. Filter is okay, and I click on update. Right, what will happen? This is what I see. Okay. So, like, let's try to uh, address this. Uh, I mean, apply these concepts of series, categories, and filter. So, what has happened here? 
Now, filter I mentioned to you is like what is sitting right at the top, filtering everything that comes into this visualization. So we have applied organization unit, which is training land. So what it says is all the data that is representing here is from the training land, right? And the x-axis here is basically uh, represented by the category, which, which are like what? We are seeing the, the, the time periods, so each of the quarters, right? And basically each of these lines that you see are reflected by the series dimension, okay? So in line charts, what you have to understand is individual lines are reflected from the series dimension. And you can nicely see, we have so many data points, like at least 12 of them. And you can see the trend, how these have been uh, changing over last um, almost 12 quarters. Is that clear? Right. Yes, yes. Okay, great. Right, so let's try to do something. Now here we have uh, the data in series and categories, uh, it's a period, okay? So we can, you know, like toggle them. So let me move data to categories and period to see, uh, series, right? And let me do update and let's see what happens. Okay, great. This is what we get. What do you think? Any comments? Is it a better visualization than the previous one or the uh, previous one was better? What do you think? The previous, the previous one, one was better. better. Wow, yeah. <laughs> like two or three people are telling previous one was better. Right, yeah. Now tell me why. Why you think previous one was better? Because our sincere should be uh, uh, on uh, X axis. So when you put categories on X axis, it becomes some uh, bonus. Uh huh. Categories on x-axis. Okay, right. So first of all, now, can we make anything out of what we have here in the first place? Like how many lines are there altogether here? How many, how many lines are here? Yeah, um, lines. Count of all quarters. Exactly. Count of all the quarters, right? So now that means we have around 10 lines here and it, we actually can't figure out which one, I mean, which line is going in which direction. So that itself is uh, enough to justify that this is not a good, good visualization. Uh, and, and in addition, it would have still been better if we were expecting to note significant differences across these uh, uh, quarters. Like say, for example, now it all depends on what we want to highlight, right? So our primary focus is when I mentioned to you the requirement was to compare how reporting rates have changed over time. But like if I, what I wanted to highlight uh, was like uh, across these, so uh, I mean like across these four data items, there have been significant differences uh, across different, different periods. And I wanted to focus on that. And of course I have noted by looking at the data that there are significant gaps across the quarters. Then I could have used this kind of a visualization. But I knew before start, or like first time I did this, or maybe when I looked at the pivot, uh, pivot table, I knew that there were like only slight differences across uh, each of the periods. And it was just, I mean, so they, they, are, they are like mostly ranging between like uh, two or three digit values, right? So by having that knowledge, I should know that uh, this kind of a chart, chart is not going to work. Okay, is that clear? Fine. All right, so I will just briefly stop here. It's uh, time is yeah, almost one. We have done it for one hour. So what I want you to do is um, log into your uh, learning management system, Open edX, and do the activities one and two up to this point. So uh, we can take like uh, 15 minutes for that. And in that you can also get a, take a uh, brief bio break. And maybe we can see you after around um, 220, so exactly in 20 minutes, we uh, sorry, exactly in 15 minutes, we can start. Is that clear? You can do this uh, ungraded exercise, not the graded one, uh, up to part two. Yeah. Okay, right. So see you in 15, uh, 15 minutes. If there are any questions, please use Slack. My colleagues will be there also, like uh, they'll be helping, yeah. Okay, yeah. All right then, see you in 15 minutes. Okay, thank you.